the most promising young actor in Hollywood. He was tasked with leading a billion-dollar franchise by himself. At the outset of the Star Wars prequel series, he was touted as the next big sensation of our zeitgeist. This baby-faced heartthrob would impress audiences with his irresistible charisma, his dashing good looks, and his potential for blockbuster superstardom. He was the chosen one, after all. Why did he disappear from the scene, and what convinced him to return? Today, we would like to talk about the rise and fall of Hayden Christensen. Vancouver-born Hayden got his acting start as a child on a Canadian soap opera called Family Passions, but quickly gained attention in the United States. For his roles in some of our favorite childhood shows, including Goosebumps, Are You Afraid of the Dark, and the famous Jet Jackson, he played Jake Hill Conley and Sofia Coppola's The Virgin Suicides and took on the role of Scott Baringer in Higher Ground before getting a role in Star Wars. One often hears the opinion that George Lucas took someone he didn't even understand here. But although Christensen was not a famous actor in those years, he was considered quite a talented actor even before he was in Attack of the Clones. A year before the Star Wars premiere, the actor starred in Life as a House, where he received a nomination for a Golden Globe and was also nominated for the Screen Actors Guild Award. He was chosen to play Skywalker in the much-hyped Star Wars prequel trilogy a year later. He reportedly beat over 1,500 other candidates and even Leonardo DiCaprio in landing the role. And all this at the age of 20. George Lucas, who chose him in the casting, knew about all this and signed a promising actor, not someone by chance. But when Attack of the Clones was released, widespread anger fell on Hayden. Not only he, but also Natalie Portman was destroyed. They criticized her too, but because she already had landmark roles under her belt, they insulted her less actively, primarily by saying that she could have demonstrated some deep-seated talent, but the script did not allow it. Even while the Star Wars prequel films received negative reviews from both reviewers and fans, they unquestionably had a significant influence on the box office. At the ripe age of 19, Hayden Christensen's world abruptly altered as he was pushed into the spotlight. He was inexperienced and as green as grass, unprepared for the storm that had suddenly encircled and cornered him. He was on his way to becoming an I-list actor, but he also suffered the wrath of the ardent fans of the movie series, who were unhappy with his performance and eager to disparage him whenever they could. To put it simply, everything was just too much. The meteoric rise to fame comes with its own share of challenges, the least of which is being recognized and valued for just one film credit. After Attack of the Clones, Christensen needed to try another role. And while George Lucas was working on Revenge of the Seath, Christensen appeared in a small project about a young journalist, Shattered Glass. The biographical drama, with a budget of six million at the box office, was able to collect less than three million. Revenge of the Seath returned the Star Wars franchise to good reviews from critics and audiences. Now there were virtually no complaints anymore, and only Hayden Christensen was not forgotten. The actor won his Golden Raspberry in the category of the worst male role. Revenge of the Seath has already performed well at the box office, grossing $850 million on a budget of $113 million. And despite all the criticism, Christensen had a chance to be a prominent actor. He had many offers, and he starred in a biographical film about Andy Warhol. The $7 million Factory Girl failed at the box office. Although the attitude of critics and audiences to the movie was positive, in 2007, the thriller Awake hit the big screens. Along with Christensen in the project participated Jessica Alba. Despite the box office success of the film, the audience did not like the sweet couple, and they were nominated for a Golden Raspberry. If critics had an average score of 4 out of 10 for the film, the audience would be 7 out of 10. At the box office, it gave the results. The movie with a modest budget of 8.6 million could collect almost four times more. The same year on the big screens came the expensive 38 million project Virgin Territory. The film was so great that they could not even find an American distributor. 
If you look at the audience score of four points, it is clear why the critics gave the project an average of two out of 10. No profit was out of the question. The most profit came from the Russian, Italian, and Spanish audiences, managing to collect a little over 5 million. In 2008, Christensen was finally expecting success with the film Jumper, where he starred. But this success could not take place if the leading role was played by Eminem. 20th Century Fox Studios had expected that after the success of 8 Mile, the rapper could bring in vast sums of money time after time. But director Doug Liman convinced the studio to give the lead role to Hayden Christensen. Initially, Teresa Palmer was to have played in the movie, but because she and Christensen completely lacked chemistry, the producers quickly replaced Palmer with Hayden's girlfriend, Rachel Bilson. When the film was finally finished and shown to the test crew, Jumper was sent out for additional filming. Costs increased by 15 million, and the final budget was 85 million. The film was practically remade in the editing room, and these changes satisfied the test group. At the box office, there was a typical situation for action films. Critics destroyed the picture, while the audience was thrilled and voted for the movie with money. Jumper grossed $222 million, for a long time talked about a sequel, but the studio did not want to risk it and abandoned the idea. After this success, the actor continued to shoot, but each of his films stalled in production. In 2010, the actor appeared on the big screen twice. The painting vanishing on 7th Street quickly disappeared from all the radars, having collected a million dollars. Another film, Takers, can be called more successful. The film grossed $69 million at the worldwide box office on a budget of $32 million. The actor just decided to suspend his career and take a break. It needs to be clarified what the actor wanted to say. Was it to get attention? Or did he need a break? Or did he want to think about what projects he should choose in the future? If he wanted to restart his career this way, it could have worked out better. He came back in 2014 with two projects that were a little different from the films Christensen had done. One of them was another blockbuster by the talented nephew of Francis Ford Coppola. This film co-produced by Nicholas in the People's Republic of China called Outcast. Such a powerful film received an audience score of 4 out of 10. Even in China, the film flopped, grossing as much as 5 million on a budget of 25. And after that, another film by the actor, American Heist, failed just as spectacularly. Together with A Dream Brody, they could collect only $3 million in cinemas on a budget of $10 million. After such a discouraging comeback, Christensen decided to try his hand as a producer and opened his own production company with his brother. At this point, we would have only learned about Hayden Christensen from the end credits after watching the films. But Disney Studios, with its series in the Star Wars universe, brought Christensen back into the fold. The Star Wars universe and Christensen are back in full meter. Despite such luck, he still continues to make films of questionable quality. And we can assume that the actor's career will end as soon as Disney is done with the series related to Star Wars.